so now it's time to give word to Susanna Dvorakova from, <laughs> from Prague. Correct? Fine. Correct. <laughs> okay. And uh, greetings uh, from Moscow, Susanna. Uh -huh. uh, the topic of uh, early retirement in the context of Industry 4.0. Uh, it's quite interesting how Industry 4.0 can affect retirement. So I'm trying to share my screen with the presentation. Okay. So hopefully. Okay. So Susanna, you have ten minutes. Sorry, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. We have a short. So we have a lot of time. So some presentations. So, will I'm trying to. Uh, Full screen. Uh, so, sir, do you see uh, the presentation? Yeah, we can see. Fine. So, uh, you read uh, the title of the paper, and the aim of the paper is the following uh, It's uh, about technical changes and uh, uh, their implications uh, uh, on employees uh, to retire early. Uh, the next uh, aim is uh, uh, factors motivating uh, workers to early retirement decisions. And finally, uh, I put some data about early retirement in the Czech Republic uh, since uh, 2010. So, uh, used uh, research methods uh, uh, cover two parts. The first one is about theoretical ground of pre retirement. And I have used uh, secondary sources uh, from the Web of Science. And the second part um, uh, covers the data uh, and uh, their analysis. Data uh, were published by the Czech Social Security Administration and dealt with uh, people uh, aged uh, 50, uh, 64. So uh, I'm starting with the literature review. Uh, technical change affects the early retirement in positive and negative ways. It means technical progress can erode individual skills unless workers engage in training programs, uh, do making early retirement more likely. And uh, the positive way is uh, higher technical levels may lead to higher individual productivity and potentially it leads uh, to higher compensation. Uh, technical progress uh, have an influence uh, on the health, working life of individuals. And we can see uh, waves uh, in the life uh, during the working uh, life of individuals. Um, um, deep uh, analysis uh, you can find um, in uh, the study about intentions of US workers to retire early. And uh, they believe that the higher the technical change, the more willing uh, are the elderly to retrain. And uh, a direct policy should uh, design and implement the early uh, training programs. Uh, theoretical ground uh, usually uh, comes from birth model as uh, it um, models a preference for early retirement. Uh, it deals with early retirement intentions and also with the adjusting uh, to the new life stage brought by deciding to withdraw permanently from working life. So I'm going to the next slide. As uh, 10 minutes uh, is a very tough uh, task, so factors uh, uh, motivating early retirement uh, covers um, uh, health uh, uh, situation of uh, individuals, then um, poor quality of work. Uh, it means uh, work conditions, uh, uh, work-life balance, and uh, uh, labor relations uh, uh, among uh, employers and employees. Um, it seems that uh, women usually tend to retire before the legal pension age. 
and mainly uh, they go to the early retirement if they have negative perceptions about the work, quality of work and uh, their life satisfaction. Uh, the opposite or a bit difference uh, exists uh, in the case of men, men who gave uh, who have good uh, self-rated workability and uh, perceive uh, good health. Uh, they intend to work, uh, if possible, to the um, age of uh, uh, standard uh, pension age. Uh, uh, studies identified uh, reasons for unplanned early retirement, uh, not only in the Czech Republic, but also in other countries. It's very similar. So employees aged uh, 55, 64 uh, usually retire earlier than comparable workers uh, in highly developed countries. Uh, in the case, um, uh, as I analyzed, in comparison with Western uh, European Union countries, uh, the dynamics of early retirement uh, are uh, higher uh, um, in the Czech Republic uh, in comparison with the old EU countries. Uh, older people, usually low-skilled and less educated people uh, have a tendency to go to early retirement uh, and uh, pensioners uh, can get pensions uh, at almost the same level as prior wages before they go to the, uh, the retirement. Uh, it's a practice in the Czech Republic uh, that the pensioners uh, uh, receiving the standard old age pension can continue to work. And uh, as, the as the implication, they can get two incomes, the pensions and uh, wages or salaries. Uh, however, uh, if a person go, uh, goes uh, to uh, early retirement, then uh, his or her early retirement pension is uh, permanently reduced uh, for the whole uh, life. Uh, among reasons of unplayed early retirement, uh, there are also uh, reasons uh, like uh, firing, release, uh, health status and medical conditions uh, in the country, and also family and other uh, personal reasons. Uh, the next three slides uh, uh, accumulates uh, data uh, about um, paid pensions in the group page 15-46. Uh, uh, you can see a uh, 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 radical change uh, in uh, years um, of um, crisis or recession, and as well during the last two years uh, when the country was hit uh, by the COVID uh, measures. Uh, it's documented uh, uh, on numbers uh, dealt with newly granted pensions, and it seems uh, as a um, uh, microeconomic uh, uh, gap or a microeconomic uh, um, obstacle for coming years. Uh, the differences uh, are uh, from uh, the point of uh, gender, and it's uh, documented <clears throat> on the last slide. Uh, you can see men uh, uh, in comparison with women. Uh, men usually tend to early retirement <clears throat> aged uh, 60, 64, and uh, women usually tend to go to early retirement uh, aged 55, uh, 59. So, the conclusion, it seems that uh, uh, the recession or crisis in the Czech Republic uh, calls uh, early retirement decisions. Uh, we see uh, the increasing uh, number uh, in the group aged 50, uh, 64. Uh, early retirement shows significant differences by gender and age group and a tendency exists uh, leading to an increased share of early retirement pensions uh, to ordinary old age pensions among uh, the uh, analyzed aged population. So uh, for practitioners and uh, top managers, it uh, can uh, generate uh, 
some ideas uh, uh, towards uh, the improvement of the quality of working life. Uh, it seems uh, that uh, good practices can be uh, to improve job ergonomics, uh, to promote individualized and flexible working time arrangements, uh, to invest into lifelong planning, uh, particularly uh, in favor of people aged 50, 64, and uh, to deal with the balance between work effort and wages. So hopefully I bastard to, to present during 10 minutes and uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, I hope that we've got time for any questions. Thank you very much, Zana. <laughs> it's very new topic for us <laughs> here. <laughs> we discussed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is our future. <laughs> yeah. There is future for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> you are in the age uh, 50, 64, and, okay. <laughs> and I have one question. Uh, uh, what would you say? Uh, how will all the people in Czech Republic are adopted to industry for the year? What would you say? Uh, it could be uh, a topic for a primary uh, uh, Mm, uh, how to say research mm -hmm. because uh, at this moment we've got only secondary data from the Czech uh, Social Security Administration and Czech Statistic uh, Office. So it could be a very good topic for a primary research. Okay. <laughs> you, you do join the research. <laughs> yeah, we will. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Let's move on. You're welcome. Thank you, Susanna. You're welcome. Thank you, Susanna. And we are going to the next uh, presenter, who is uh, uh, Khaled Ghazi uh, from uh, Ural Federal University. So the topic is uh, hotel employees attitude and acceptance uh, toward human robot co-working based on the work 5.0 concept. Okay, so we are talking about work 5.0. We are still <laughs> have uh, 4.0, but now we, uh, Khaled is trying to introduce 5.0 concept. It's interesting. So uh, Khaled, if you are ready, just share your uh, screen. And Zuzana, you can close your uh, presentation. Okay. And, yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Khaled Ghazi. In the beginning, I would like to thank you all uh, for allowing me to participate in this uh, conference and special thank you to Prof. Alona Fudrov. Um, so I'm going to share my presentation. Yeah, this. <laughs> So the research that uh, I'm going to talk about is under the title of uh, Hotel Employees Attitude and Acceptance Toward Human Robot Co-working Based on Work 5 Concept by Khaled Ghazi and Aluna Fodro. Uh, so to begin with uh, introduction, between Industry 4 and 5, uh, Industry 4 is about production and, and connecting the device together uh, but industry four is around the collaboration between human and robot in 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 the ro in, in the workplace. Um, so industry four is only uh, only focus on on the process, but ignores the human uh, the human labor, and this is the biggest problem of of industry four that comes uh, into play. So um, industry five is the solution because it focuses on human and robot at the same time. Um, so now, from Industry 5 to Hotel 5, how can we uh, implement uh, Industry 5 to Hotel 5? Uh, the components of uh, Industry 5, including a human, human cyber physical system, uh, internet, iOS, IoT, uh, for the first components, HCBS uh, 
include humans with the system. Now, a human with artificial intelligence and work system, a human now is in, inside the system and a part of the system. Uh, for the second, for the second ailment, iOS, it is uh, around the, the organizational level. Uh, uh, yeah, this is collect uh, co connect connect all all support all the team members all the organization by cloud com cloud computing and big data um, regarding the hotel business ios links it with customer service customer bills uh, room availability restaurant facilities um, collect information from different data to give services according to the customer needs uh, third element, uh, IoT. Yes, this is uh, uh, one one of applications of of IoT in in hotel business is uh, set the room, uh, for example, lighting, TV channels, temperature, music, etc. Uh, adjust this customer uh, setting to the next visit automatically. So for what business personalized service, creative work conditions, uh, lower cost, accurate information, all the functions of, of Industry 5 can be transferred, transferred to a hotel business leading to Hotel 5. Uh, AI agents in the hotel, uh, hotel business, uh, smart advices, we talked about it uh, in previous uh, slides. Uh, let's talk about that book. Chatbots, we all know what is chatbots. It is conversational agent, uh, understand and communicate with, with customers' language um, in voice or in, 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 in text chats. So chatbots implemented in, in, in variety of service sectors, including uh, tourist recommendation, medical consultation, auto reservations, uh, but uh, chatbots have some advantages and some disadvantages. For advantages, uh, it, it, um, uh, chatbot deal with large amount of, of requests at the same time, save huge amount of information. Uh, chatbots work without mistakes, without stress, without emotional fluctuations. But uh, on the other side, chatbots have ethical uh, escalation. Uh, when people, they, are communicate with a real, uh, people think that they communicate with a real person, but it, in the in the fact they are communicating with with a software. So uh, the areas or, or operations in in the hotel that impacted by robotics technology and automation, uh, cleaning purposes, self service terminals, uh, providing information and 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 uh, support, uh, customer now can uh, do check-in, check-out procedure without help through smartphones. Uh, now moving on, literature review. However, automation and, and robotics are increasingly used in, in hotel business, uh, but these robots might present psychological and social issues, for examples, uh, human interaction with a robot may be averted if if generate stress or uh, anxiety. Uh, there are a lot of positive attitudes uh, toward robots, uh, but also there are a lot of negative uh, perspectives about robots. Yes, and the majority of, of studies uh, conducted in, in, in this field concentrated on customer, on custom, customer perception, customer uh, interaction with, with these devices. But um, uh, the studies around employee robot interaction relatively limited. So this study focused on employee attitude and, accept, and acceptance to working, working with robots. Now, moving in research methodology, uh, self self administration questionnaire distributed between employees 
uh, of luxury hotel in Katrinburg, Russia, in five and four uh, hotels. Um, a number of uh, 200 questionnaire form is distributed between employees. And among them, 167 uh, were returned valid uh, for analysis. And also the questionnaire trust translated from uh, English to Russian because some employees that don't speak uh, English. And for uh, the tool, uh, it is divided uh, into three groups. First group, uh, question regarding changes in workplace and second group for uh, uh, question related to psychological and social attitude. Uh, and the third group, uh, questions related to demographic categories. Uh, and the respondents were asked to uh, rate the statements according to five point Likert scale. Um, the analysis, uh, firstly, Kronbach Alpha performed to test the reliability of the scale and the data after that, uh, analyzed descriptively by SPA, as SPSF. Now, now, I would like to talk about uh, the results. Um, if we look at this table, table number one, we can notice that this table represents uh, demographic characteristics of respondents according to uh, the table. This table, uh, around 62% of respondents were female. Uh, less than half of, of respondents were uh, 25 or, or, okay. or less. A majority of participants. Oh. One minute, one minute, please. <laughs> oh, stop. Okay, this is uh, the full uh, results. And I, I can uh, conclude uh, them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The main finding that a uh, robot will, will in, in workplace uh, will cause some uh, some issues such as increase the employment and also uh, present some um, social social problems such as uh, losing the contact with, with humans uh, yeah yeah it is, it is a lot Yes, uh, for for the limitations and uh, and further studies. Firstly, uh, the empirical data collected from one geographical areas. Further research can do this research in 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 in, um, in different countries, uh, in different economic backgrounds. Uh, second, uh, this study used. Uh, Use the tool, questionnaire tool, to collect uh, empirical data. So further research can also use uh, other methods such as uh, interviews in order to uh, identify different themes around the topic. Uh, finally, uh, uh, AI or artificial intelligence research in in service sectors it is still in the, in the primary stage. So uh, further researches are needed to expand the research on different groups and different levels. Uh, finally, this is uh, appendices. It is uh, the questionnaire by Russian and by, by English, but uh, if I, uh, I think I don't have time uh, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, and if you have any question, I will be happy to answer. Thank you, Khaled. Maybe just one question. We have a couple of minutes. Uh, I think, um... Uh, Halit, uh, uh, if I understand uh, right, uh, you made your survey just in Russia and Yekaterinburg, not yeah. in Egypt. How about uh, uh, e Egypt, Egyptian? Egyptian, Egyptian data. data? Yeah, yes, yes, it is. Um, actually, it is very good questions. Uh, question, uh, yes, uh, it is planned to. Uh, to expand the research between different countries. Yeah. And this is the first stage. Uh, and in further research, 
we can um, include also uh, a sample uh, from Egypt and we can compare the results. So okay. it is with uh, further research. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hamid. Thank you. For your presentation. Thank you very much for you. And now we move on. I can see that uh, Maria Menchikova, uh, she is with us. Hopefully. Yes, I am. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, Maria represents Sapienza University of Rome, collect, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, and um, the topic is organizational change during the pandemic, best practices of Italian tourism enterprises. Okay, right. I will share my, my screen. Okay, but hopefully, yeah, now we can see it. So, okay. Okay, uh, good day everyone. My name is Maria Minchikova and I am professor at Sapienza University of Rome. The topic of my presentation today is related to the changes in tourism sector and consequently in the operations of the main stakeholder of sector during the pandemic COVID-19. So in order to understand how tourism enterprises be able to adapt their performance to new condition of external environment, we are going to analyze some data on the tourism situation in Italy. Then we are speaking about new travel trends and uh, drivers of organizational change. After that, we are going to describe an example of Italian tourism enterprise, how some changes have been developed and introduced in order to continue to attract customers and to reach goals, both in terms of economic results and in terms of customer satisfaction and consequent fidelity and loyalty. In conclusion, we will try to understand the role of the ICT in the process of enterprise transformation in the period of crisis, which can be characterized by a strong need to give a quick and low cost response to the environment. So uh, in the last two years, the tourism sector and its main stakeholders have had to face the critical situation caused by the COVID pandemic and consequent pressures and limitations from a political, economic and social point of view. Lockdowns and periods of closure, restriction and new rules to follow, timetables, social distancing, rules on hygiene, sanitation, new more to serve clients like takeaway, home delivery, unfavorable economic and psychological situation of Italian and foreign families, limited freedom of movement and choice. All these aspects have had a significant impact on the performance of the sector, both worldwide and in Italy. Uh, Italy being one of the countries that depends heavily on tourism, had the greatest decline compared to other countries in the world from the point of view of the well-being of the country, of the entrepreneurs and employees involved in activities related to creating the travel experience. So um, on the graph uh, in this slide, you can see how tourist presences in 2020 decreased by about 70% from abroad and by 30% relative to the Italian domestic tourism. Um, in this slide, uh, you can see some trends uh, of the main tourism uh, preferences of the main tourism cate categories. So this huge decline has caused damage to various types of tourism players, above all to hospitality businesses, restaurants, travel agencies, tour operators and shopping. Uh, the major categories of tourism that have been damaged are sea tourism, 
mountain tourism, large cities, destinations with a culture, historical and artistic location. Regarding the reduction in profit generated in 2020, we can speak about um, the reduction for travel agencies and tour operators uh, have lost about 70% uh, of profit and accommodation catering enterprises have almost halved their earnings, um, so about 40%. Um, in this slide, you can see uh, some trends, uh, some travel trends in 2021. So with the spread of the virus, new measures and regulations introduced by governments, consumer preferences have also changed significantly. We should note that despite the profound health and economic crisis, they have not stopped traveling but have had to transform their travel experience. In this slide, you can see the main trends in the tourism sector, actually. Uh, the new concept relating to proximity tourism is emerging. In fact, according to some studies, people prefer to make trips that not exceed 90 minutes from their residence from home. Due to unpredictability of the future and fear of making decisions, the travel reservation is made a few days before the trip. The most important aspect that I evaluated by choosing the destination or the structure, the enterprise to visit are uh, hygiene and the possibility of social distancing. In fact, the greatest diffusion can be seen in tourism activities outdoor and less crowded places in accessible or unknown to ordinary tourists. The greatest importance in the choice of travel is given to the aspects of sustainability, to corporate social responsibility. Uh, another most important trend for us in the framework of this conference is dematerialization of the tourist experience or a part of it that allow to get the service or product even remotely a distance through digital technologies or alternative channels. So uh, therefore we see how the main elements of the tourism experiences change, uh, for example, travel motivation, movement space or mode of traveling, vacation time, and so on, stimulating the need also for every organization operating in the tourism sector to start the process of transformation, organizational change, in order to survive and remain sustainable as long as possible. So the main driver you can see in this slide of organizational change described in recent studies are um, the following four. Product and process innovation, sustainability, network development, and digitalization. Let's try to understand how an Italian company was able to consider these four elements to continue to function efficiently even during the, during the pandemic. So uh, the company that was analyzed is a former Benedictine convent located in Assisi, Umbria region in Italy. This company before the pandemic offered different types of on-site of offline services like accommodation, cultural, spiritual, gastronomic experience. So uh, in fact, the structure is composed by 20 residences, rooms, restaurant and cocktail bar, um, monastic ortuli, so a, like a species of vegetable garden cultivated directly by the enterprise, park that represents bioconservative catalog of medicinal species of plants and um, different activities related to the uh, ancient alchemical laboratories and food labs, 
for adults and for children. So another aspect very important, uh, very important that must be considered in order to understand the direction of change in, during the pandemic is the particular attention of this company or of this structure to the aspect related to territory, local community, and sustainability and envi environmental sustainability. Um, like other operators in the sector in Italian tourism, the main problems faced by this tourist company are the following one. You can see uh, them on the slide. So closing period, periods, um, inability to receive guests, to provide the off-site, uh, the offline services, new norm and rules about physical and social distancing, new target groups and new preferences of the customers, and also need of costs reduction and quality increase also during the pandemic. So uh, in this slide, you can see the main organizational changes that the company introduced to face the pandemic. We have divided all the initiatives, all the projects of the company into four categories, which correspond to the four most important development drivers we talked about earlier. So product and process innovation, digitalization, sustainability, and network development. So with regard to the product and process innovation, we must point out the changes that occurred in the process of creating and distributing the experience offered by the company. In fact, you can see some transformation from the distribution of product services and experiences dry, directly on site to online distribution. For example, some educational events, labs, uh, were organized in the digital reality, thanks to digital tools and channels like video conferencing, social networks. Another change in the organizational process is related to the distribution of agriculture products cultivated by the company. Uh, if before the pandemic, agricultural products were used in the kitchen of internal restaurant, now a large part um, of these products uh, is used for the sale in order to transfer the gastronomic experience directly to the client's home. So these initiatives is also possible, possible thanks to digitalization or commerce process uh, like creation of e-commerce on, on the website of the company. Yes, um, I, I speak a couple of words about a sustainability, sustainability project. So regarding the sustainability, some project aimed at safeguarding the naturalistic and environmental heritage. Uh, so the company um, have developed uh, the project like Ortuli for Rent. Um, so Borgo, this company lost to cultivate remotely a plot of land um, directly by the clients, monitoring it, check it in online to have traceability of the crop or of the agriculture product and then receive it at home. Or another project that uh, adapt nature. So the company created the section on the website in order to involve clients on the issue uh, related to environmental protection. So um, very important thing to note uh, that uh, this area too, the sustainability project has been supported by the digital technologies like smartphone apps, official website, video conferences, and so on. So um, the company developed um, also some uh, projects related to net network development and the collaboration of different stakeholders in order to promote the community, the territory, and the local product uh, at zero kilometer um, directly to home through e-commerce channels 
uh, and so uh, to incrementing the profit as uh, the economic results obtained by uh, the company uh, that we analyzed and different companies involved in this network projects. Uh, so um, also in this case, the digital technology technologies play a crucial role for the possibility to develop uh, these projects. Um, so in conclusion, um, I, um, I should uh, speak that uh, for tourism business, uh, innovating in the pandemic period means increasing the level of their resilience. The resilience in the case is perceived as ability to deal positively uh, with traumatic events, with critical events, to positively reorganize the performance, the life in the face of difficulties, to rebuild oneself uh, while remaining sensitive to the positive opportunities that environment offers without changing its own identity and the identity of the territory, of the community, of uh, local residents and so on in which it is rooted. So we saw that frequently the process of the tourism reorganization um, is based on four principal drivers, product process innovation, sustainability, digitalization, network policies. But on the basis of this key study analysis, we can conclude that the digital tools and platforms are essential attribute, a central key element and facilitator for launching, for managing and for supporting different initiatives and different projects uh, that can be related to different areas like network relations, sustainability, social responsibility, development of new services and so on. Thus, uh, thus, each enterprise's development uh, measures necessary to adapt to new env environmental conditions must, first of all, access, uh, verify its digital capital and the level of its digital development as the key element to success in the crisis situation. So thank you very much. And um, I can uh, answer to your question if you have them. Thank you very much, Maria. I have a short question for you. Uh, With a short answer. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I know you are an expert uh, in tourism sector. And uh, what would you recommend to Halit uh, for, for his research uh, the direction of his research in hotel business. Do you okay. Have um, in fact, I would like to speak also about some further research about, about uh, the further direction to develop this research. So uh, my recommendation or my desire uh, in this sector is all also to study in depth um, the changes of uh, tourism organization also in different countries, uh, in different enterprises, in order to compare um, the modes, uh, the tools, uh, instruments uh, to be able to, to face the crisis um in this period so uh, we can also speak about some com compare uh, studies from different countries from different types uh, of enterprises like uh, hotel organizations and the role of digital technologies uh, for hotel sector for restaurant sector for tour operator and tourism agencies and so on uh, and so on in order to understand also differences um, in the application of digital tools um, by 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 these companies Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. It is interesting. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Okay, we are moving to the next uh, presenter, and this is uh, Marina Irinovsky uh, from Ural Federal University. No, no, Federal, no? Ural State. Oh, State. Oh, yeah, State University of Economics. It's different. Uh, yeah, sorry. 
Marina, Maria, Maria, are you with us? Uh, Maria, switch off your presentation. Yes, uh, my dear colleagues, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, and we can see you see. as well. Okay, wait a moment, and uh, I will share my presentation. Greetings uh, from Moscow to Yekaterinburg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very glad uh, to see uh, my dear friends and uh, my colleagues. Uh, uh, can you see my presentation? Yes. yes? Yeah. Wait a moment. And so the topic uh, of uh, my report is uh, Digital Labor Platforms, a Russian Case. Uh, my name is uh, Marina Chudinovsky. Uh, I live in Yekaterinburg and uh, present uh, uh, Ural State uh, uh, University of Economics. And also I'm a member of Alena Fedorov's team. Uh, and uh, we made uh, several researchers uh, also including uh, factors of social pollution of labor relations on the workers' well-being in the digital economy. And uh, first I want to start from uh, the point what a digital platform is. Uh, digital labor platforms are now a vital part of contemporary life. They allow us to arrange a ride, order food, and access a host of other services. For example, if we need a babysitter. They accomplish this by connecting clients or customers with workers who undertake these tasks or uh, gigs or micro tasks. Uh, the past decade has seen the global rise of gig workers and also of uh, digital labor platforms. According to the ILO report, uh, there are something about 800 uh, digital labor platforms uh, in the world. Uh, the main part of them are located in uh, the field of uh, delivery. And as we see, uh, COVID pandemic, uh, helped them to rise. In Russia, uh, and in Russian case, uh, Russia is uh, like, um, I can say, a blind uh, place, uh, because in ILO reports, uh, there is no information about our country and about incomes and uh, workers of uh, digital labor platforms. So uh, we collected data about um, incomes of main uh, digital labor platforms in Russia. As you can see, uh, the biggest platform is Yandex Taxi. And I think that everyone uh, who lives in Russia uh, uses this uh, service. And as you can see, uh, the incomes of uh, taxi service uh, has increased uh, 20 times since 2016. And also other main uh, digital labor platforms are uh, Yandex Food, Delivery Club, and uh, Profi. Uh, this is a website uh, for um, micro tests and uh, uh, such tests as uh, tests for babysitters, uh, for hairdressers, and other people. As uh, you can see on the next uh, slide, the costs and benefits of digital platforms are not shared equally across the world. 96% of investments in such platforms are concentrated in Asia, North America, and Europe. 70% of incomes are concentrated in just two countries, the United States and China, but not in Russia. According to the report of uh, International Labor Organization, digital uh, labor platforms are providing new work opportunities, including for women, persons with disabilities, young people, and those who lost uh, their work in traditional labor markets. Uh, but as uh, you can see on the next slide, some platforms have significant gender gaps. And also the COVID pandemic has further exposed many of issues. You can see it there. Are working conditions fair? Are platform workers satisfied with working conditions? What problems do digital labor platforms have, especially in Russia? And how these problems uh, can be solved? Uh, in order to determine uh, the factors and uh, the problems, 
uh, a number of methods can be used. In uh, 2015, uh, this uh, um, site, this website, this platform uh, was launched for workers in Germany, Austria and Scandinavian countries. On these platforms, employees rate uh, digital labor platforms uh, from zero to five uh, point scale. And so several years of work on the platform showed that the rating is uh, significantly influenced by the duration of work, national cultural characteristics. Uh, in Russian Federation, employees reviews are presented on a number of websites, and we uh, choose the, this site, otrudie.net, uh, and we made uh, the following research. Uh, so, uh, first, uh, we uh, gathered all the reviews for different digital labor platforms. Uh, the presented data show that, in general, the level of employer satisfaction with working conditions is low, doesn't exceed 2.5 points on a 5-point system. And you can see that the lowest rate is uh, for uh, Uber and the highest is uh, for Delivery Club and uh, Profiru. Uh, and uh, the lowest degree of satisfaction was recorded for the components relations with management and career. From a geographical point of view, reviews are most often left by residents of big cities, such as Moscow, St. Petersburg, Yekaterinburg, Novosibirsk. Next, we carried out a content analysis of the narrative parts of the reviews, uh, for example, about Delivery Club. Uh, the semantic core allows you to accurately uh, characterize what the platform is. As you can see, uh, the main words are uh, work, hard work, and even I put it in red, sweat. Uh, also, you know, workers told that uh, they had a lot of fines on these platforms. Uh, the high level of dissatisfaction with the working conditions led to several strikes and also began to, and also workers began to complain uh, with uh, law enforcement agencies. So our study uh, proves the need to form a legal framework uh, for digital labor platforms in Russia. Working conditions for platform workers are not fair. Uh, and the main problem is that there is no social protection for uh, these workers because uh, most of them are self-employed. Uh, for example, they don't have a right for vacation or for pension or for social care. And uh, this is a great uh, challenge for our country. And at the end, uh, uh, I can conclude that it is very important to ensure that platform-based workers have access to social protection. Uh, second, it is important to give platform-based workers the right to organize and negotiate collective agreement. Uh, for example, uh, there is no uh, collective ways to protect uh, their rights because uh, everyone works on its own. And uh, the third thesis is, uh, is this, it is uh, very important to increase transparency in the world of platform-based work. Uh, based on foreign experience, it seems necessary uh, to launch a site, a website, or maybe a platform uh, where every citizen can read about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of working through digital labor platforms. For example, uh, such uh, websites uh, are, uh, have already exist in the United States of America. Uh, that's all I wanted to, to tell today and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Marina. <laughs> Just uh, perfect timing. <laughs> perfect time manager. <laughs> I'm very well, glad. We have uh, plenty of time for questions. Uh, <laughs> if the audience have uh, some questions to yeah, Marina, please, uh, please do it. So, 
No questions in the audience. Okay. It was perfect. <laughs> so, uh, Marina, you mentioned many, many uh, digital labor platforms. And what is the uh, preferences in our case for Russian market, actually? So did, did you have any uh, data about uh, what platforms are really popular in Russian environment and Russian businesses? Uh, so uh, I, well, I closed my presentation in Russia. Uh, the most popular platforms are a platform for tax for taxi drivers, uh, the first segment, uh, the platforms for delivery couriers, and also uh, micro task platforms, for example, like Yandex Toloka or Yandex Do. Have you heard about this platform? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, from from your uh, explanation, it means that new kind of businesses, which are uh, not uh, uh, traditional businesses, they are using this digital label platform. But well-established uh, uh, businesses and organizations, they don't do it. Uh, so oh, this, this delivery services, this is a new kind of services that appear just recently in the market. So delivery is a new kind of service, uh, but also digital plot platforms are very popular for freelancers, such as IT specialists, for example, or for designers also. And the point is that our uh, Russian uh, workers, Russian citizen, uh, can be employed not only but by uh, Russian uh, companies, but also by companies uh, from the United States of America, from Europe, or even from China. But uh, uh, do you think any benefits to uh, regular businesses, to organizations like, I don't know, uh, educational no, organizations? No, uh, no advantages for traditional business, uh, because I can uh, give uh, an example about uh, taxi. Uh, when I was young, I went to Sochi and a taxi driver asked me about 1,000 troubles uh, uh, for a ride. And now when we uh, use taxi, it's about maybe 100 or 200 troubles. Uh, you see, uh, platforms uh, uh, can... Um, destroy traditional businesses and this is a great uh, challenge uh, for uh, them okay I see. okay but uh, you know even uh, traditional businesses they now are uh, changing uh, business model we just discussed it uh, in a previous se session that uh, uh, this uh, you know value chain is changing to value uh, ecosystem and a traditional way of creating value is changing from this linear chain of events to network of services. So if a traditional business change from linear value model to ecosystem, digital ecosystem model, so maybe they will ask for this kind of digital labor services as well. Uh, you know, the case is that uh, digital uh, labor platforms uh, require investment and large investments. Uh, and in, uh, uh, in world practice, uh, only very big IT companies or traditional big holdings uh, can uh, make these investments uh, for uh, such platforms. For example, uh, Uber uh, has uh, gained about several billion dollars of investment. And in Russian case, it is very difficult for small companies uh, to build such an infrastructure. Okay, so there is a chance to make a, a special maybe cloud-based service, outsource this uh, digital labor platform. Instead of investing into platform, you can just order services from some, I don't know, outsourcer. <laughs> You know, I think that digital labor platforms will be a very important part of economics and it is very important even to us uh, to know all the rules and to use them also, for example, as uh, teachers and tutors. Okay. 
So thank you, thank you very much, uh, Marina, for, for this interesting talk and uh, discussion. So you can close your presentation and we are moving on. I, I think we can uh, move to our Moscow colleagues from uh, Moscow uh, Technical University of Communication and Informatics. So we have two interesting uh, presentations from uh, Irina Manonina, Vladimir Shestakov. Are you ready? Irina? Yes, yes. Uh, it's Vladimir Shestakov. Okay, because uh, next presentation from Anna Babkova, uh, it was in the first half of the uh, session, in, uh, in Russian session, we had this presentation. So now we can move to your presentation. Okay, thank you. We can see it. Great. Can you see my presentation? Yes, yes. Dear participant, good day. Oh, dear participant on conference. No, sorry for my English. I only today before we change the lecture. Your presentation present. You are presented with a report on the topic using self-paced multimedia course to create an individual student trajectory. The research is aimed at solving the fundamental in the disciplinary problem of individual educational trajectory of students, take in account race, conductive, and personal capabilities. The model is being developed in accordance with the modern education trend, which called smart education. An individual education trajectory of students is a personal way it raises the personal potential of each student in education determined by the student together with the teacher. Organized, taking in account their motivation, abilities, mental and socioeconomic and temporal capabilities of students. Pardon. The process on the difficult implementing and development of cognitive, creative, and communicative abilities of trainees occurs during the educational movements of trainers along individual trajectories. Thus, the choice of education trajectory during the period of study at the university is the joint action of the teachers and the students aimed and development the student skills for independent education activities. The implementation of the formation of such trajectory should be based on the professional preliminary work of the teacher, based on the study advanced scientific, technical, and technological achievements, which make it possible to build trees of education, the, the central object on which Everything else is formed in the textbook. Is advisable on the basis using the capabilities and for communication system to prepare a more concentrated teaching material in the form of electronic presentation, which including additional software subsystem to provide the intellectual support for the student. Uh, preparatory stage when the creating an intellectual electronic lecture presentation. Program implementation of the lecture presentation. In the table, enter the following data. The student's full name, group number, the date, and the time of the uh, open the lecture presentation. Time spent on each element of the course taking in account the number of entry in the course and the number of the calf in this element. Norm for each of n slides in independent of t. Based on the set, the values of t, e, n, and t, n, recommendations in the useful tips, recommendations shown and the useful tips are formed. In intellectual communication when studying the material. This uh, the, the, 
from the answer of students different ways for the uh, another work. Testing subsystem records the number of attempts, the time and date of start testing, the duration of testing, the total number of questions, the number of questions missing, the, the number of correct answers, the number of errors made, the time norm of each question, and the each question is omission. Is marked it. solution is correct, solution is incorrect. The data is recorded for all interests into the testing system. Testing subsystem. A simple option is to select one of the more correct answer. Calculation and input or sele selection and the calculated value from the opposite option. The construction a logical change to answer as well as task is establishing competence. The construction flow chart as well as preparation for truth statement. The construction of formulas from the source data. Test can be a several display opinion discuss on this. Next, the some example of this test. Report of student is the, the test. Complexion, questions not answering correct in, in, in other. In the construction, intellectual lecture presentation, one can, can conditionally this kitchen to subsystem training consisting of slide with the study of additional material and testing containing various test tasks, where TE is control time for passing the EC block, TE is time for real study by student of this block, T tau E is TE in different uh, T E. KES is number of correct answer, KES is number of incorrect answer, KES the number of missing answers. It gives us opportunity to create individual student trajectory. Thank you for attention. Okay, uh, good. You are pretty good at timing as well, Vladimir. Thank you very much uh, for making it uh, short and clear. So uh, the question is, uh, I, I have several questions actually. So uh, we have no time for several questions. <laughs> but maybe uh, a couple questions. So uh, first of all, we are talking about so-called multimedia uh, courses. Uh, so what do you understand on the multimedia? So these are courses with the multimedia content. Yes. Yes, it's oh. a video content, the moving uh, pictures, the uh, testing, uh, in, including in the, this uh, presentation, so in the um, graphics, um, the formals, and the other. So it is essentially uh, hypertext, uh, HTTP with the multimedia stuff like uh, videos and uh, animations, maybe uh, 3D graphics or whatever, something like. Videos all including in the multimedia. We make some presentation like this. The main presentation of the course of the common uh, theory of communication. If the uh, yeah, correct tra translate the общей теории связи. The, uh, and this presentation, including all these components, when I 
uh, say. Okay, and uh, the next question is about uh, individual student trajectory. Do you think it's possible to build a student trajectory using only multimedia courses? No, it's uh, no. The only multimedia courses are time when uh, student use for study this course, time for uh, um, test, correct test, incorrect test, there. and then yes, um, if uh, possible to recommendation to repeat some uh, the, the part of course, of course. Okay, and uh, this system is ready system. You use it in, in your uh, educational process. We, so it's not like a platform. Right. We use this system about two years. Uh, but uh, now uh, we have about three multimedia lecture with all elements of I is, uh, is teaching the class. And you are going to expand it, add some more courses. Yes, yes. We expanded it, but it's very difficult to manage because it's a big collective who created this course. Testing, multimedia, in the MySQL, bar, it is some data center in the other. Okay, I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much again for your uh, project. Uh, uh, we'll see how it develops over time. So maybe next year you can uh, tell us more about new courses and maybe some new features in your system. Thank you again. So uh, we are going to next. Uh, if there is no any uh, other questions from the audience, uh, we are going to Yelena Kucharenka and Alexei Jankevsky. I saw Yelena was the, uh, among our okay presenters. Yelena, can you hear us? Alexei. Alexei, yeah. oh, uh, uh, great. Okay, we can see your presentation, we can hear you, uh, you, you can start. Hi. Uh, do you see my presentation? No? Yes, we can see it, we can run it. Okay. Uh, our topic about uh, future sound optimization of uh, digitalization of geographically distributed organization in relativities of COVID-19. Uh, in this case, we have some, uh, <clears throat> for us, um, uh, we'll be interested to uh, discuss some practical experience of uh, this case for optimization and functionality on organization from real sector of economy in the state of pand pandemic. The change of this point of view of the situation with COVID-19 served us to drive catalysis or some new point of view, like you want, for the conversation of technological and the organization and process of into digital form, from different parts into digital. We provide analysis of practical experience of it, development and implementation of this uh, for different engineering projects from Russia, from point of view, how to uh, move all process to digital side of design process, equipment and facilities and insta installation on some installation works and other. In this case, we provide some uh, list of questions after that, uh, prepare the list of categories uh, that help us to 
describe the problem statement. The first of all, uh, the restriction of movement of any employees. Homeworks uh, after that remove of the uh, subcontractors from different uh, companies need to collocate this process. After that, work of employees on mobile devices. Other uh, eighty percent of employees first usable devices in, is mobile. The PC or laptop, it's like a second one. Uh, online tracking of delivery and dispatch of, of goods and after that, the how to uh, make the solution of this case. The uh, need to dedicate, uh, use the dedicated encrypted mobile connection. After that, the second part, it's FICE ID technology to uh, understood correctly this, this uh, person is with that uh, with who we want to ask to discuss something like that. Uh, need to use the technology of speech to text. How to provide uh, voice to text information for uh, more useful of that. Uh, online video collaboration is. Alexei, the... Alexei sorry, uh, you are not changing slides. So please uh, uh, run your presentation full screen. And uh, because we, we only see the first slide of your presentation. Only first slide? Yes. Yeah. The second one, the third, not? No, no, no. You didn't run your presentation. Maybe this one better? No, no, no. You, 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 oh, yeah, that's better. Better? Yeah. OK. Now you, we can see the slide change. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Change now, yep. Yeah. It's great. The how, how to find the solution, dedicating visited mobile connection, face ID technology, specs to uh, speech to text, online video collaboration, uh, customer support tracking system, uh, electronic document management, API uh, for connection for different uh, system and use of uh, cloud to disaster recovery solution for uh, for example for a banking system. Uh, the conclusion, uh, what the uh, re short results, the reduce of the time for decision making time from 72 hours for two, four hours, one day. The second one, the, the, the reduced uh, reduction of direct of indirect cost uh, by 20, uh, 23%. Customer satisfaction increased by seven or eight percent. Employee productivity increased by twenty point seven. But in this case, some uh, some bad size. So it's employees ask that homework. It's cannot focus it on on uh, all time. But, but provide more flexible time to uh, make his job, for example. Uh, what, the, what more? The use of the complex uh, of this technological solution has uh, reduced the decision, the first one, the decision making time. It's uh, the conclusion it can be noted that the situation with COVID-19 served as an uh, accelerator to the creation and new solution for various sector of uh, the economy, which uh, provoked uh, the technological and uh, innovative activities uh, of uh, companies and the state. Uh, trust the context of a pandemic, uh, a new direction of use of digital technology has been formed like a COVID touch. Any question? Okay, you are done? Yep. Good. So uh, there are a lot of questions uh, actually, but maybe just a couple. Uh, you know, we are uh, talking about digitalization of the organization. Yeah. 
we can consider it from different perspectives. From, yes. from uh, perspective of uh, architecting uh, the system, from uh, technological aspects. So mm -hmm. what is the focus of your study? Uh, are you focusing on those technologies for di digitalization that uh, we can use in uh, organizational uh, changes? Or you are talking about how to better arrange people in a, a company to use better, I don't know, those technologies. So what is the focus? Focus on technology for digitalization or focus on people? The focus of technology, the how to complex, uh, use the complex of technology to connect the people. So because with, without the, this connection, with, without they have different technologies, but how to connect them uh, productively for uh, people? Okay. Do how to uh, how to do it more efficiently? So do do you have answer to this question as yeah. a result of your study? Yeah, of... the, the, the prepare the uh, yeah. metric metrics. After that, for uh, uh, collect the different technology and connect them between uh, use, for example, for IP API. In this case, the with using a cloud technology or disaster recovery, they provide this uh, complex of solution to high speed connection between employees. Okay, so your, your solution, how does it look like? Your solution is an application or your solution is some kind of document, uh, just a recommendation, or you said you have some kind of metrics. So uh, this, now the solution can you offer to organization uh, to make this uh, op uh, optimizing digitalization. So based on what? Based on, based on recommendation, based on specific. Okay. Okay. What? They have the mathematic model. Uh, based on this mathematic model, they provide the list of recommendations how to do it more efficiently. After that, uh, they have a list of application who that application pro uh, how to connect this application for more effi efficiently use. Uh, so you have a single set of documents that you yeah. can help Yeah, we have us the set of documents, yeah. Okay, I see. And it can be uh, applicable to any kind of organization, small and medium-sized enterprise. Uh, huge organizations or whatever, uh, I don't know, business organization, commercial, uh, maybe uh, state organizations like governmental offices, medical or, I don't know, production systems. We, we prepare for organization of thousand employees uh, it will be a government part or commercial part, uh, because for this uh, solution, like a puzzle, they have used with part, or the, if no need, they cannot use it part. For example, uh, in point of view of um, uh, delivery, if need to uh, GPS uh, to control the delivery, we can use we, we can uh, add this part application we can add this application to our um, solution if no need switch off and uh, you uh, tried it on some real organization so you uh, we start from real organization but after that we the just uh, they have a scientific part of that because the the question is a little bit more that uh, 
real organization, but for real organization, we prepare the solution that uh, now uh, function on mobile devices. Okay, you are talking about mobile devices, so it's yeah, not, yeah, it's, it's not first of all, it's not just a piece of documents, it's a, some application, it's a it's some collection of application for mobile devices. We have description of this uh, collection of mobile application for mobile devices. It's the feature that uh, all these uh, application usable on our mobile phone or your mobile phone. It's easy to connect. Just need to secure a connection. After that, we can use uh, Face ID to confirm you. ID and uh, do something. Okay, it, it would be good to have in your presentation when we're talking about solution. Uh, okay. Some demo demo of your uh, uh, demo. Sorry. Solution. Okay. Otherwise, we we cannot understand what it is. Is it about application or is it about piece of paper? What is okay. it? Solution. So this is why I asked so many questions. Okay. 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 What we are talking about now, I can see that uh, uh, you have some kind of application, or maybe many yeah. applications. Uh, it would be good to to see some examples, some okay. demonstration, maybe some screenshots. Uh, Screenshot. No, yeah. Special. Okay. Okay, but anyway, for for next uh, next time, please uh, make this kind of presentation so Thank you. they understand your solution. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we still time for uh, maybe one uh, easy presentation. So if uh, Alona is yes. ready, so let's uh, let's make it so that it's here. Let's share. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, it's not a run. Yeah, then this okay. one. Okay. So we hope you can see the presentation. Now we can uh, start it. Just wait. It should run for full screen. Okay. I have a time <laughs> for my presentation, and uh, and this is uh, from uh, Ural Federal University. We have Alona Fedorova and Olga uh, Korobets, uh, and this is about revealing significance of employees' well-being factors in countries under study uh, cluster analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, firstly, I have to express my gratitude to my colleagues from uh, international research team uh, because this presentation uh, elaborated based um, on base uh, of our joint research in five countries and I will um, talk about it uh, later and um, Globalization and digitalization of society are leading to fundamental alterations in the labor sphere. Global trends and turbulent times are changing their work environment. Stop. Stop. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't have any changes in uh, slides. I think. Yeah. Uh, do, do we see changes or not? Please, audience. Um, no, there is no changes. There is no changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay, so uh, try again. Yeah, yes, yes. Now it is working. Problem state, uh, statement. Yes, slide. Okay. Yes, yes. Problem okay. statement. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, global trends and turbulent times are changing the work environment stipulating the emergence of new forms of labor relations and employment models. 
Thinking on the ongoing transformation processes requires a monitoring study of new phenomena, as well as the creation of a knowledge system about the directions and prospects of human resource management and labor relations development. The categorical apparatus of the well-being phenomenon in the workplace today includes many terms that are widely used. Health and well-being of personnel, happiness of employees, loyalty and involvement of employees, job satisfaction. The growing diversity of the workforce in terms of age, gender, ethnicity, various needs, motivations, preferences, differences in values, roles, motivation, and social culture uh, characteristics require the adoption of uh, differentiated personnel decisions. The effectiveness of well-being management practices that resonate with employees today also depends on the social cultural features of human resources. No? No. Maybe another. Yeah. 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 Now <laughs> we have. Okay. The uh, theoretical framework of uh, our research um, consists um, several theories, and I would like to emphasize the um, social cultural aspect. The social cultural uh, cultural aspect. Um, sorry. Is it visible or not? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Visible? Yeah. Not for me. <laughs> okay. The social culture aspect uh, implies such features characteristic of a certain community that can be measured in a certain way and used for uh, comparison with the social culture aspect of another community. It's uh, important for our compar comparative analysis. So uh, in the processes of, of the presented study, um, uh, the author carried out the comparative analysis <laughs> of the, thank you very much, uh, of the social culture characteristic of the interviewed workers in a number of countries with different models of social and economic development identified on the basis of cluster analysis of empirical uh, data uh, from uh, a sociological survey. The results of a monitoring study were obtained by conducting a sociological survey of hired workers in different economy sectors in January, February uh, 2021. 20, um, uh, the general population of respondents was formed by attracting employees from Russia, Czech Republic, Tokyo, and Kazakhstan, um, and uh, sorry, and Latvia, to the online survey and amount to 1,148 people. Uh, due the, to the limited resources required for conducting uh, a sociological survey, a spontaneous sample was obtained in each of these countries, implying a survey on the principle of any available respondents. The cluster analysis of empirical data was carried out with the aim of typologizing on the uh, basis of the social cultural aspect of the survived workers from separate countries. Uh, when interpret, uh, interpreting the results obtained, it was considered that the respondents' answers to the questionnaire are ambivalent. On the one hand, uh, they are associated with the objective situation prevailing at the companies, as well as the processes taking place in the industry, the country of residence. On the other hand, uh, the perception and attitude uh, to these conditions and processes are subjective. Some employees react sharply to changes, others believe uh, that they will not be personally affected by these changes or do not notice any changes at all. Uh, but, mm, 
Junkin uh, by the uh, silhouette measure of connectivity and separation of clusters, the optimal solution is two clusters. The first clusters uh, is relatively prosperous. Workers in this cluster have low indices of concern about their current work, the negative impact of work on physical health and the brain, uh, the need for take various actions to keep, uh, to keep their jobs. Uh, they did not encounter evaluations of agreements by the employer, uh, did not face unfavorable um, managerial decisions, for most of them, there are no threats about their current work or unfavorable human resource management practices. The second clusters consist of workers who have faced certain problems at work and have high indices of concern. However, this binary solution seems to be too obvious. Therefore, the authors adopted a solution of seven clusters as the optional one. So the most uh, representative is the first clusters uh, um, that we uh, conditionally call as no change in the level of well-being at work. Uh, the second cluster uh, is uh, high objective probability of decrease in the level of well-being at work. Uh, the, uh, each uh, fifth uh, respondents uh, go to the cluster reasonable high level of concern about them being at work. And uh, um, each uh, uh, about 13% respondents will go to the cluster decreasing the level of well being due to the transition to teleworking mode. Uh, about the uh, same amount of respondents uh, go to the clusters who weakly expressed personal decisions unfavorable, uh, unfavorable uh, for employees. And uh, about the same uh, amount uh, of respondents go to the six clusters that we called uh, as a high level of concern in connection with arrangements and treatment by employers. And the seven clusters is called unreasonable high level of concern about well-being at work. This is, uh, and we um, aggregate uh, all clusters and, and made characteristic in different in all sample of respondents in a different country and we can see uh, that all countries the main uh, main factors of respondents cluster st structure is gender uh, we can see that uh, mostly men uh, go to prosperous clusters and we but women in non-prosperous clusters uh, in Russian federa Federation, the main factors is number of sources of labor income, income, uh, salary, wage only at the main place of work. This is a factor of prosperous clusters. Uh, several sources of labor income. Uh, this is a factor of uh, non-prosperous uh, clusters. In Czech Republic, we have uh, another situation the main factor is level of education. Uh, the respondents of prosperous clusters have a master's degree, but uh, we can see in non-prosperous clusters, most of, most of them have a bachelor's degree and below. Uh, different situation in Turkey. Uh, the main factor is membership in a national minority or majority. Uh, national majority, uh, there are in prosperous clusters, national minority, there are in uh, non-prosperous clusters. And uh, Kazakhstan, uh, the main uh, factor is industry appellation of the labor application sphere. And uh, uh, it's interesting, but uh, people who uh, work in education and culture <laughs> more often represent in prosperous uh, clusters. So this is just several slides uh, for illustration of results of our uh, 
com uh, comparative analysis of uh, survey results. And uh, on this uh, slide, you can see uh, big, um, differences uh, between different countries in um, answers, uh, different questions that uh, about different factors about well-being well at work. For example, how uh, exactly are you, uh, your work arrangement, arrangements formalized with your employer? Uh, or what changes in the personal policy of your organization have occurred over the past years? Yes, we can see that, uh, for example, noticeable differences in Czech Republic. Uh, or what leadership decisions which were taken over the past year have an adverse effect on uh, your well-being. Uh, also, a uh, different situation, but uh, it's just illustration. We can see uh, there are differences and uh, noticeable differences uh, in countries under study. Or, for example, what type of threats of your future exist in your current job? Um, it's this, um, obviously, this is a factor of well being at work. Or, for example, uh, this is a com comparison and uh, um, comparison of ratio in different countries. Um, that build, uh, built on the uh, based on the answers or on the question how does your work affect affect your physical and psychological health for example the uh, first place um, goes to in russia my health state worsens due to the stress in the workplace at the same time, uh, in the uh, Kazakhstan, I have to go to work even if I feel uh, sick. Okay, uh, uh, for example, in Czech Republic, the first place is my work has no any effect on health. Uh, and uh, at the same time, in the Turkey, I feel tired and exhausted exhausted at work. So, uh, designing global transformations in the company, it is necessary to simultaneously decide, uh, first, uh, firstly, to ensure acceptance of the transformations by personnel in the medium term, uh, one should rely on the current uh, perception and behavioral attitudes to of employees. Secondly, to move the, the trajectory of the development in the long term, a system of management measures should be envisaged that contribute uh, to the desired value shift. It is no doubt that uh, effective managerial decision on corporate human, human resource management today require considering the social cultural, cultural characteristic of personnel. The actualization of certain social cultural aspects depends on the goals set. Among the main limitations of the present research, uh, one should mention the heteriority and insufficient amount of empirical data obtained. In this case, cluster analysis as a method of multifactorial explanation of phenomena, processes, behavior accompanied by their multidimensional classification makes it possible to determine the similarities and differences necessary to identify uh, the fundamental, fundamental elements of the aggregate of this data. Interpreting a cluster structure, which in many cases starts with determining the number of clusters, is a creative challenge and is often used when it's necessary to organize a complex set of data before developing hypotheses for casual modeling, as well as when creating descriptive classifications and typologies. Thank you very much for your attention. And this is a, a list of members of our international research team. Okay, any uh, questions in the audience? If not, I have a question because I'm a person from data, data science a little bit okay. yeah so 
when I hear clustering, I know for sure that uh, clustering is not unique. So uh, for the same data, you can create multiple clustering schemes. Mm -hmm. So just changing distance, for example, one of the major parameter in cluster is distance between points. Mm -hmm. So just changing distance or changing a formula for calculating distance between different points in your data, you can change cluster structure completely. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned in your uh, conclusion that uh, your yeah, cluster structure is really uh, a challenge mm -hmm. to find a good number of clusters. So you may have just two clusters or you may have mm -hmm. 200 clusters. Mm -hmm. So what kind of uh, clustering methods uh, you use in your research? Because there are so many algorithms, and so many uh, even software packages. Okay, for cluster analysis, we use uh, this program and with, okay. uh, yes, Vortex. Vortex. And, yeah. and what kind of algorithm inside? You don't know? No, because uh, I have a specialist who elaborated <laughs> with our Data. Okay, so okay. You, usually we have uh, several different algorithms and mm -hmm. we are trying to apply all of them or ensemble of models as we call it in machine learning. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, sure. I think it makes sense to uh, try uh, different variants of uh, clustering. Okay. Because sometimes a clustering structure mm -hmm. uh, discovers uh, some interesting knowledge hidden in your original mm -hmm. data. Mm -hmm. And you can find some very interesting uh, clustering if you're talking about people, if you're okay. talking about uh, of different countries. So, thank you very much for your yeah, recommendation. Yeah, this clustering can uh, get many, many interesting results. Okay, it will be our next step. Yeah, and we okay. can help <laughs> if needed. <laughs> thank you yeah. very much. Just give us good data and we can give, okay. give you uh, good results. Yeah. Thank you. So a, any other questions uh, in the audience? If not, uh, uh, so we are actually close to the end. Now we can make a little break. We need something like uh, uh, 10 minutes to, to prepare for the closing session so that we can discuss some uh, points, uh, how we can or come to publications after the uh, conference because conference is not just about uh, talking to each other asking questions and answering questions and making presentation but also about uh, uh, publishing so uh, we can discuss what uh, kind of options we have in <laughs> Yekaterinburg and here in Moscow and uh, our international uh, partners can also help us with publishing our results uh, so uh, let us discuss maybe in in 10 minutes okay and now uh, just a, a small break okay